Hello again and welcome back into the study uh, where we're continuing our perspectives on John chapter 1, the prologue. So we have an idea, I hope you we have an idea by now, the kind of arena that John is writing into, the difference between his gospel and the other gospels, um, the synoptic gospels. He's talking to a different society, a different way of thinking, where Matthew, Mark, Luke were talking to a very still Jewish way of thinking. He is now, John is now talking to a new kind of society with new thinking, Greek philo philosophical thought permeating through. They're moving away from their Jewish roots. They're moving into areas of of human understanding and we get more heresies we're starting to get the emerging of the Gnostics and their influence within the church the bureaucracy the way that the church functions is starting to become a lot more comprehensive and a lot more organized and in that it's also losing something of its natural tendencies we looked at John chapter 1 and the difficulty of the translation that includes the definite article and changing the perspective of those early words both in John chapter 1 and in Genesis chapter 1 and that we're looking at the starting place where God begins to make a difference and the difference is about identity, it's about meaning, purpose, order, function it's about values, it's about ethics, it's about who I am rather than where I am or what I do. We looked last time at the idea that the gospel was saying something about the idea of, of logos, logos, this idea of what is a good life. Um, the Greeks used this idea of eudaimonia, what is a good life? And they did all kinds of ideas. There's something that's beyond humanity but not necessarily about God there was the idea it's about ethics and values there was the idea then okay if it's about ethics and values it's also got to be about actions and activity that make a difference and then we had the idea that it's it's about hedonism it's about the pleasure and a good life is a pleasurable and a happy life and is a little bit more selfish and in that way, we went on to Heraclitus and we talked about the fact that we live in a complex, changing, ever-changing world, that we never step into the same river twice. And yet we're searching for these elusive answers to questions. And the very ground that we're trying to ask the question with is changing all the time. It's like trying to, to, to have a, a combination but the combination changes and each time you come back, you've got to find the new combination to get into the safe to get to your money. And this whole idea that God comes and he holds everything together beyond our asking, beyond our imagination. And in that there is a security of faith that I am not the victim of a life. I'm not a victim of the chaos. But that God comes and he wants to give me life in all its fullness. John chapter 10, verse 10. And so we're beginning to build up this idea, this foundation of where John's gospel is going. And you'd be pleased to know that we're moving on from verse 1 uh, today. We're moving on into this idea that the logos, this all holding together, in him was everything. He was the production of everything and in him all things hold together as Paul writes to the Colossians. Now in verse 2 we're beginning to see what that begins to mean. Verse 2 says he was with God. There's, there's, an, a, there's a personality there's a substance to this idea of Logos. It's still talking about Logos. We haven't moved on anywhere else yet. Jesus is not yet in the picture until verse 14. We're still talking about Logos. And Logos 
was the essence of God from the very beginning. It says he was with God. Now the Greek word pros, here that's translated as with, it's okay, but it's, it, it's bigger than just with, it doesn't mean alongside, it means something much more than that. Pros actually means a little bit more directly, it means something face to face. It means something that is absolutely identical. Um, I remember uh, the program we have in here in the UK called The Vicar of Dibley. And there's a program in The Vicar of Dibley. It's a comedy about uh, a lady vicar in a small English countryside town. <coughs> and there's a time when a very famous ballet dancer was in the town. And they put up this thing that looked like a mirror. And on one side was this very slender, well-trained dancer. And what looked like a mirror, it was framed like a mirror. And on the other side, however, was the Vicar of Dibley, who wasn't, apparently. It was obvious that she wasn't a trained dancer in any way. And the idea was that she completely mimicked the trained dancer obviously it was apparent that they were not the same it wasn't an, 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 an image and it wasn't a mirror but it's more than this idea of, of being a mirror it's this idea that face to face is that they're exactly the same they're identical in every way. So the language is working very hard here. The word with means that they are of the same essence. I remember when uh, we had the youngsters at home and we had a dog at home. Um, occasionally the dog would start barking and it would be barking at its own reflection in the, in the window. And it would get all worked about at its, its, its own reflection because they thought it was another dog. Now we're beginning to see this idea that face to face, it's, it's not a mirror, it's not, but it's neither is it another God. It's face to face as in absolutely the same essence. We're beginning to see some understanding of the idea of a trinity. That God has dimensions of personality, of character, of his very essence. And that part of that is everything that is him is seen beyond him. So we begin to get this idea that Logos, this character of God, was an absolute reflection an absolute image, an absolute face-to-face -face bringing together of the essence and the character and the identity of God. It goes on after verse 2, and it says, Through him all things were made. And then using the Hebrew idiom of parallelism, it says the same thing the other way around. So the first part of verse 3 says, Through him everything was made. And the second part says, without him nothing was made. So it's emphasising that what we read in Colossians chapter 1, in him all things hold together. There is nothing without him. The very essence of the order and the purpose and the meaning and the function is all because of him. And it's his character. And it's in the essence that everything is face to face with him. Everything is part of who he is. The being with God that we read in verse 2. It's more than just being present with God. It's much more than that. It's about everything being an absolute identical essence. Face to face. No difference. And so verse 3. Through him all things were made, 
without him nothing that has been made was made. He is the source. But not only the source, he is that which is the holding together of everything. Doctrinal terms, he is the preserver and the governor of all things. He is the one that abides and continues and finds its fullness and its meaning and its purpose and its function by remaining in him. So we're beginning to see something as John begins to expand what he's trying to say. He's trying to say to us that if he is absent, then that which we are can never be that which we should be. We're always going to be lesser. We're always going to be that which is searching for eudaimonia, having arguments about where it's found. But when he comes and he's present, those arguments change because he is the source. As Christians, we approach him in prayer. And that prayer is, is a communion trying to say, this is me. You come and, and, and show me what it is to be face to face with God. Again, we're reflecting back into Genesis 1, when God made humanity in his image. We're not talking about any two legs, two arms. The image is about being face to face. There is no distinguishing between who one is in character, in identity, in meaning, in ethos, in pathos. I mean, there was the time when Jesus says to his disciples, all the things I've been doing, you can do that and you can do more. And then there was the time when in John chapter 14, show us the father and Jesus says to the disciples, when you have seen me, you have seen the father. Jesus is face to face. There is no differentiation of everything that we are. We're not talking here physical. We can't dilute the essence of what God is saying to make it into a physical physicality. We're talking about dimensions of our eternal being of our soul, of everything that makes us the image of God. And it's about being with God, as John writes for us in chapter 1 and verse 2. And the very fact that I find life in all its fullness, 10 verse 10, because in every part of who I am, I am face to face with him. I am with him. We are not separated. And I seek and strive in my discipleship, in my holiness, to be everything he is in character and identity, in values and ethos. And in that, I find life in all its fullness. But it also means that when he is not then life can never be the fullness that it should be. There's a part that then starts to seek for you, Dominia, a good life rather than a godly life and a deep life and a hopeful life and a love life. We find things to fill gaps. God is saying to us, be with me. I want to be with you. Now you be with me. Let us come face to face. And in being face to face, we see everything about each other and we can be united in every aspect. 
So through him all things were made. Reference, whether we want to talk about the physicality of creation, I don't believe that we should dilute it just to that. I believe that we're talking about emptiness into fullness, meaninglessness into meaningfulness, void into hope. Well, through him all things were made, and then without him nothing, the hope, the meaning, the function, the grace, the life in all its fullness, without him, all of that can't function and can't be all that God promises to be. He can't be all he wants to be. And I just fall under the auspices of never being able to achieve, never finding hope in fullness. Belonging to the Salvation Army, we're a holiness movement and we believe that holiness is not just about actions. Holiness is when the character of God fills me completely. And it's not me, it's him. It's him in me. Remember when Peter went to Jesus and said, how many times must I forgive? Seven times, which was the legal requirement. And Jesus turned around and said, no, 70 times seven. When it's something that comes out of who you are, when your character is not bound, but is beyond all the boundaries, it's beyond anything you can imagine. It's beyond all those things that make sense in a human sense. Then I see him face to face. I am with him. And he is with me. And that's his promise to us. It's his promise to you. That in holding all things together, the more I hold him, the more I find my fullness. Life in all its fullness. John is laying a fantastic foundation for us. And in our next time of looking at the perspective of this prologue we'll be looking at the concept of light as life and understanding what also that means in genesis and in john chapter one but i hope you captured something of where we've already got just in those first few verses that god has a character and in that character he has not left us has not forgotten us. That character holds all things together. It's about bringing his fullness. It's about bringing absoluteness. It's about bringing a good life, but more than a good life. It's about bringing the fullness of life. And that fullness is found and maintained when he is the preserver and the governor of all things. And my holiness, my holy living, becomes a reflection of him and not a reflection of me. May God bless you. As we bring together our thoughts from uh, today and the idea of Logos, then let us pray. Father God, I give you grateful thanks because you are in the midst of our life and our living. And what may seem challenging and difficult in so many ways, you find ways and means of reaching to us and strengthening us and guiding us, giving us wisdom, helping us cope with those challenges to bring life, even when there is hopelessness and lostness seeming to be so visible so come, and within us, through your Holy Spirit, may you come and your Logos work within us, that our lives may be whole and full and filled with love. 
But we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.